Hey, welcome everyone. It's one o'clock. It is so lovely to have you here for our um, first webinar of the year, uh, ending ending strong. Um, I'm Orvi Dingwall. And I'm Gail Matheson. I'm one of the Minot librarians. Yeah, and so we will, it's one o'clock, we'll get started. Gail, why don't you uh, take it away? Sure, sounds good. So our session today is just introduction to Minot. It's just an overview of the services that we have. And we'll do, um, we'll talk a little bit about up to date as well that you have access to through our services. Sorry, muted me. Um, the first thing I wanted to do today was to give our land acknowledgement. Uh, so we're part of the University of Manitoba. So uh, it's uh, the University of Manitoba campuses are located on original lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Denny peoples, and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. We respect the treaties that were made on these territories, and we acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past, and we dedicate ourselves to move forward in partnership with Indigenous communities in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. So our objectives for today are just to uh, go through and describe our MyNet Library services and then talk about up to date and do a little demo of that and then um, talk about how you can access up to date, whether that's uh, using your desktop or using a mobile device, and then how to critically appraise uh, some of the content on up to date. So um, as we go through, we had just had a few questions uh, that we'll ask you. Uh, so today uh, we were just gonna, we were wondering where everybody was joining us from. So if you feel comfortable, you can uh, feel free in the chat to uh, just type in where you're from. So uh, after today's session, we are recording, so we will post uh, it on our website, and we will also circulate the slides from today so that if you want to go back and review some of the stuff that we've talked about, you will be able to do that. So what is MyNet? So MyNet stands for Manitoba's Health Information Knowledge Network, and we are actually a part of the University of Manitoba Health Sciences Libraries. And we provide service to employees of Manitoba Health, fee for service physicians in Manitoba, and staff of participating regional health authorities. So, on this next slide, we just have a list of the regional health authorities that we provide service to. Pretty much everybody, except for those in the Brandon region, because they have their own library service. And, Gail, sorry to interrupt. Um, no, go for it. And I'll, I just wanted to mention that. Uh, this is our first time um, uh, using Zoom webinar for um, as our platform, and we thought we had the chat open that everyone could chat into it, but we heard um, a post that the chat is closed. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, and so um, thank you uh, for noting that. Uh, so we're we're all learning as we go uh, along. Okay. Um, okay. And then our team is made up of Orvi and myself uh, as the librarians. And then uh, Cheryl is our library assistant. And she's the person that you'll usually be communicating with if you have uh, literate or lit if you are requesting uh, documents, uh, she'll be sending them to you. And she usually is the person behind our MyNet email address uh, and will respond to you if you email through there. And she will also take uh, new library registrations. So she does a lot of different things. So um, how do you get a MyNet library card? Uh, library cards are free. 
and uh, you can complete one of the borrow registration forms that you can find on our website. Uh, and you can uh, fax it or email it into us. Uh, you do need to also send us a copy of your work photo ID when you register. And then Cheryl will send you your library account information and she'll give you your access information to up to date. So why register for library services? Um, there's so much information online that you can already access, but on the internet, nobody knows you're a dog. So anyone can post anything online. And there's some really great stuff out there, but there's also some stuff that's not so great. So our hope is that when you use our library services that we'll be able to help support you and find some um, of the best quality information out there. So that um, if you are searching for information and uh, um, and it's sitting behind paywalls, uh, you will be able to, to get to it through us without having to, to pay for it. And um, hopefully we'll save you some time. <laughs> so we have four main library services. Uh, we have literature searches, document delivery and current awareness, and education and training and orientation instruction. I'll go through each one. So um, with our literature search service, uh, you can send us a research question and it can be anything from you're interested in articles that a particular author has published, or maybe you want some more clinical care information, you know, the question like, what are the best practices for pressure ulcer prevention? Then you can send us that question and we'll go through uh, the different library databases and find you different resources that have been published on that topic. So we'll send you a list of citations and we'll also include the abstracts so that you can read through and decide which full text items that you want. And uh, then you can request them through us for free of charge as well. So usually it takes about five to seven business days, but we also do um, urgent patient care questions if you need things right away. So to request a literature search, uh, you can complete our online form, which is really easy. You just take the information in and, and hit send and, and it sends it right to us. Or you can print off the PDF form that we have on our website and uh, email that to us or fax it to us. Um, and, or you can just send us an email with your request as well. So the, uh, the next question we were going to ask was, have you ever requested a literature search through MyNet? And we were going to do a poll. Yeah, and I've got it all ready here, Gail. Oh, so perfect. yeah, I'll just launch the poll and uh, you can let us know if you've ever requested a literature search through MyNet. Just give everyone a second. Okay, we'll close it in three more seconds. Okay, uh, so most people here uh, have not uh, requested a lit search before. So a couple of people have and many have not. That's great. Uh, um, okay, now I will. Okay, so the next uh, thing I want to talk about was document delivery. So this is this is when we will send you the full text of an article or a book. Um, all you have to do is send us a citation for an article, and then we can send you the full text free of charge. Um, so if you're searching and you come up against a paywall. You don't have to pay for it. You just take down the citation and you send it to us, and we will send you the. Um, the, it depends on how long it will take, uh, three to five business days is the average, but it depends on workflow and the availability of the item. Um, we can also send books through the mail. 
and they will come with the return postage so you don't have to uh, pay for them at all. And uh, if you want to search for different books that we have available, uh, you can look uh, at the U of M library catalog to get some ideas of what items you might So then our next question uh, was, have you ever been searching for information and need to access to the full text article? Okay, so we've got another poll on this one too. Launch that and you can let us know. Okay, we're coming in at like 100% here. Perfect, so just give it. Three more. We'll launch the polls for 20 seconds here just to give everyone a chance. Okay. So yes, 100% of our participants today have needed access to those um, full text articles. So don't ever go without and don't ever pay money for those articles. This is exactly why we're here for you. Yes. So the next service that we have is Current Awareness uh, Alerts. And what this is, is a weekly email that we can set up so that you will receive um, the latest published information. It might be for a particular journal that you're interested in or an author that you're interested in, or maybe a specific topic that you wanna know what's been published recently on that. Um, you can receive it weekly in an email to keep up to date on that. It's completely customizable, so you can choose what you um, what you want to be on your current awareness alert. And uh, our there is a form on our website, so that you can uh, fill that out. Um, and it also can has a few different selections, so it might give you some ideas for some of the most common alerts that we set up. Yeah. Okay. So then education and orientation sessions, like the one we're doing now. So these are some sample sessions that we've done in the past. Um, they may be uh, how to search a particular database, how to critically appraise information, or maybe how to use a certain reference management software like EndNote or Mendeley. Uh, we do have some recordings available on our website. Um, but we will come and do in-person sessions on request, or we could do a video session on request if you want uh, on any of these topics, or if there's something different that you would like to, us to talk about, we can also set that up as well. So electronic access, um, access to up to date with your MyNet library card. You don't have access to the other databases through the University of Manitoba libraries, unless you are a student of the U of M or you have an, a faculty appointment uh, through the U of M. And if you do, then, um, and you need help, we are happy to help um, walk you through how to access the things. But up to date is the only thing that uh, everybody has access to. And before I pass it over to Orvi, I was going to just, let's see if I can search my screen. I was just gonna quickly show you how to get to our website. So if you just do a Google search for MyNet, and it's the first thing that pops up. And then everything that I just talked about, you can get to all the links under services and then click through under any of these things. So for a lit search, um, here's our form right there. And you can also do an online search. If you click on this link, it'll take you to as well. If you wanna order documents, it walks you through all the different things. And there's a few um, toolkits here as well that will take you to um, some freely available resources. But I just wanted to show you how to get to all of that stuff on our website. So I'll throw it over to Orvi now. 
Great. Thanks, Gail. I'll just get you to end your screen share and I will. Oh, actually, I can I can just yeah. take over. There we go. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so you should see my screen now. And I'll just mention with all of those, we we are here to serve you. And so if you um, don't feel like if you're having a thought and you're like, I need this article or I have a question, but like Gail told me about this form that I'm fill out, or maybe I should, you know, not email Gail directly and I should do this or that. Don't worry about that. Um, how, whatever's going to be most convenient for you is uh, we can work with that. Um, it just sometimes having the, um, the prompts on our forms just ensures that we're getting all the information we need um, uh, as quickly as possible, but uh, we, are, we are not super formal. So you can just email us or, or call or whatever, whatever you wanna do. Don't feel like um, we, won't, we won't be able to do your literature search if you haven't filled out the form exactly. So talking about up-to-date, um, go. So first of all, wanting to make sure everybody knows what up-to-date is. It's an electronic clinical decision support tool uh, used by clinicians and also non-clinicians. And it includes, you know, over 10,000 topics, a really great drug database, really informative, easy to read patient education topics, lots of graphics, and also medical calculators. Um, and I know this one's a little on the small side, uh, but this is the table of contents of a whole bunch of different topics that UpToDate includes. Um, and we know that trying to find some information is like trying to drink from a water fountain. And UpToDate really takes away that, um, uh, really synthesizes things down and provides synthesis in ways that you can just say, I want to know how to care for a wound or how to remove earwax. And it just gives you the step-by-step, -step, doesn't force you to, you know, read through 12, um, uh, 12 systematic reviews, all with slightly different uh, recommendations. Um, it really gives you that step-by-step, -step, what, you know, what, what are the signs and symptoms of something or what should I be doing for this patient? So um, we've been, we've had up to date provincially uh, in Manitoba since 2016. Um, and I think, Gail, and so uh, up to date is offered for a larger group than just our MyNet services. So it's all fee for service physicians, um, everybody here at the University of Manitoba, all of the employees in the regional health authorities, cancer care as well, and all staff at Manitoba Health Seniors and Active Living. So I'm going to launch. Oh, and of course, now that I'm the host, I lost my control. Where did my control panel here go here? Um, maybe Gail, do you, you want to launch the poll? Do you see it there at the bottom? We're just curious if anyone here has um, has used up to date. Sorry, way to throw it to Gail. Just like, oh, I I got it here. Now I've got it. Again, we're just learning our. It's our first webinar on Zoom. Here we go. There. So let us know, have you used UpToDate before? And thank you for everyone's patience as we uh, navigate our, our softwares a little bit. Okay, great. So most of you have not yet used UpToDate. And that, so I'll just share that here. Um, so one yes and five no's. No problem, you're in the right place. Um, so. How do you access up to date? I'm going to talk us through it a little bit, and then Gail's going to do a demonstration. So, if you are at Manitoba Health or at a, um, a, um, a regional health authority facility or cancer care facility, you can just log in uh, to one of your computers on the um, uh, and and go to uptodate.com, and poof, it recognizes where you are uh, and that you are an employee. Um, you can also come through our website. So particularly if you're at home or if you're wherever you might be, um, so you can access up to date from anywhere, anytime. We've got step-by-step -step instructions and we can send these out to you afterwards as well that just really walks you through um, because we know it's um, Friday afternoon and you know, come next Wednesday when you're like, oh, I wanna look up this thing. You'll be like, oh my gosh, where do I even start? Uh, and so we will we will give you that step-by-step -step guide. 
Um, and so, but basically you go to our website, mynet.ca or .com and click on the up-to-date in the tab there. And then the um, FAQ is that first, uh, that first click where it says view the step-by-step -step instructions. So that is all ready for you. Can you access up-to-date from home? Absolutely. And can you access it on your mobile device? Also, absolutely. So to access on your mobile device, it does take a few steps. And um, uh, and so with as with anything, just you know, find a little moment of calm, and uh, and then um, then you'll be all you'll be all set. So you want to well, and again, we'll, we're we're going to walk you through this. Uh, come to our website. You'll need to create an account and up to date, uh, which is is free. And then um, on your mobile device, you grab that. You go to your app store. You download the up-to-date app, then the account that you created on your computer, on the website, then you enter that information in your mobile app, and there you are, you're okay. Uh, and then you log into the app with your up-to-date account. So basically, go to the website, create the account there, download the up-to-date app, and then log in with the account that you created um, uh, on, your, on the website. And for some people, we know you've already um, sat there and done this. Uh, and for others, we know that you might need a little bit of um, walking through that process, and that is totally not a problem. We are absolutely happy to help you walk through that. And um, and similarly from home, the key thing is, is that uh, to, um, to log in from home, you can log in through our website, or if you created your account, it will recognize you, and uh, then you don't. You can just go to uptodate.com log in with your account. So there's a couple of different ways to do that. One um, thing that is not super user friendly, but up to date requires that we make you do this, is every 90 days, you need to log in again, either from your workplace uh, or through our website. And that's just to uh, demonstrate to up to date that you're still an employee here within Manitoba. And um, we have some people and they once they do it once, then they remember how to do it. And we know that they go forward and are renewing on their own every 90 days. And other people, we hear from them every 89 days and that is totally fine and we walk you through it. And it's a great opportunity for us to connect. So no problem. Again, we're here to uh, help you with um, accessing up to date at uh, wherever you are in the process. If you are interested in collecting education credits, UpToDate does offer uh, continuing professional development credits. They make it really easy. So anytime you're going in there and searching, then it is uh, keeping track and then gives you credit for uh, basically doing that, that research. Okay, we're gonna turn it over to Gail for a demonstration. And I'll say too, um, just as Gail pulls up her screen, uh, feel free to raise your hand or include in the Q&A section, just if you have any comments or any questions right away. Um, we can, uh, and if you would like to um, ask your question instead of typing it, just um, indicate to us and I'll unmute you so you can ask. Um, and again, we wanna make sure that you're going away with the information that you need and with all your questions answered. All right, Gail. Okay. So um, just going through our website, you can get to up to date by just clicking on the link here. Oh, and it's gonna, because I'm off campus, it's gonna prompt me to log in. So you'll get a prompt if you're not um, at the sites that Gordy had talked about before. Um, it's a very easy interface to use. Uh, if you wanna browse the contents, you can just click here and you can, browse by specialty if you want and then it will you can just narrow down until you get to the individual articles if you want to go back to the search you just click up to date in the corner and it takes you right back so one of the things with the search um, in up to date is that it's a smart search and it's links um, medical terminology and sort of layperson tech uh, terminology 
So if you search heart attack, it will also bring up results of myocardial infarction. And you don't have to always remember the medical terminology as you're searching, which is nice. Um, and then these are just our search results. So it brings up all the different articles that you can go in or entries that you can read. Just go into one. Um, it's very easy to navigate uh, each entry. There's a table of contents on the left-hand side. There's also a search box up here so you can search the article for particular words um, if you want. Uh, there is um, there is your author information here at the top. Uh, you have contributor disclosures so you can see it. We have any bias that you want to make note of. You can uh, print. And Gail, could you just um, uh, zoom in a little? Uh, the font is just a little on the small side. Oh. Um, Like just in your browser? Oh, I see what you mean. Like this? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay. Let's go back. Is that better? Okay. So um, at the top here are some options, and you can click on the print if you want to print the entry. And then it gives you a nice uh, layout. So if you, instead of just printing, doing a screen print, if you come into the print option, you can either save it as a PDF um, and, and save it to your computer, or you can just print it to your, to your printer. Um, I'm gonna go back. And now when you do your search, there are a few filters. Okay, there's a few filters at the top, adult, pediatric, but there's also this patient um, filter here. And what this is, is uh, all of these entries are meant as patient information. So they're, they're written in general language, easy to understand language, and you can actually give them uh, to your patients to understand different things. Um, and you can print them the same way you print the other articles. Um, but you can also, this information is freely available. So all of the other professional um, entries, they're not freely available. And you need an account to access them. But the patient documents are free. And you can actually share a link um, online and your patients or other individuals that don't have access to UpToDate can, um, can view these online charts. There are a few other um, that I'll show you here. So there's uh, some different calculators that you can go through. You can um, by specialty, do an alphabetical listing, and uh, they're pretty easy. You can pop in different values and give you out the results. And then there's the drug interactions here. That just kind of zoom out. There we go. Um, so in this, you can take different drugs. Um, and search to see if they will interact. What interactions they have. So if you just have one, you can click on the one particular drug and it will give you a whole list of the different interactions that
anyway, um, it gives you a, a whole list of different drugs that will interact with it. And it will give you, you can um, look in here to see what the different uh, letters actually mean right in here so that you can read a little bit more to, to understand that. You can add in um, other multiple drugs together or compounds. Oh, and then you can analyze all of them and it will spit out the interactions with particular drugs. Pretty easy to use. Um, I don't know if you had anything that you wanted to add with that, Orby? Uh, no, those are, this is, um, I think, one of the most popular uh, features of up to date, this, the drug interaction one. And it's not just prescription drugs, it's over-the-counter ones, um, herbal uh, remedies, um, like you see Gail entered in grapefruit juice there. Um, so it is particularly, we know pharmacists use this particularly for um, when patients are on a lot of drugs uh, and, and when anyone is considering um, adding a new drug or, um, or just if a patient is asking you, um, uh, you know, is it is it okay that I've added this or start taking this or that or whatever? Uh, it's a really, really fast and easy way to to enter uh, or to check for those drug interactions. Good. Well, I'll send it back to you then, Orby, to finish. Uh... Okay. Yeah, I think, and I'll also just mention, um, up to date. It's it's in many ways a lot like Google. And it's not uh, some of the other databases that we um, uh, do uh, information sessions on uh, or teach you how to search. Some of them are really quite complicated or you have to have a really precise way to get from them the information that you need. And up to date really is designed. You can put in a common, uh, like a layperson term, a medical term, um, and it will just provide you with the, the information you're looking for. Maybe with the um, caveat of it doesn't, though it has, you know, over 10,000 topics, there are um, areas that are not included in up to date. They just don't have content on certain subjects. Um, and so if what you're looking, if you do a simple search in up to date and what you're looking for doesn't quite come up, um, it's not that you've done something incorrect in your searching. It's just that up to date doesn't cover that topic. Um, so just, just if that happens to you, there's reassurance, um, but uh, there's so many topics with um, such important, rich information. Okay, um, I will now just talk a little bit about, oh, and I have opened my slideshow here. Uh, so up to date is called up to date, but is it really evidence-based. And I just want, we'll spend a couple of minutes talking about that. And I'll use from one example, neonatal circumcision, the risks and benefits. So this is a common, um, common uh, something common that people contemplate when they are having um, a baby. And in this entry in UpToDate, um, they have this statement here that we've uh, highlighted in the, in the green um, rectangle which references a Canadian Pediatric Society guideline from 1996. And the first time I saw this, I thought, wait a minute, has this not been updated since, uh, like has UpToDate not updated its entry since 90, 1996? And I went to the Canadian Pediatric Society and I um, searched and sure enough, the guideline had been updated several times um, since 1996. And so it seems that in UpToDate, it's not that they, um, well, and I'll, oh yes. So here was, here was where I did that search. They've, um, you know, they reaffirmed uh, their statement in uh, 2021 and they did a significant update in 2015. Um, so does that mean that UpToDate doesn't know that they've um, updated that? 
Uh, it seems like UpToDate's default is as soon as the original evidence to inform a practice or to uh, guide a decision, as soon as that is published, they cite the original source. So sometimes you might see something and it might be like this one, a 1996 guideline. There is a more recent one, but they've cited the original. So uh, that's just something um, I know that's something I like to do is when I find a recommendation and they'll say, we think you should, you know, if if you've got a patient with this, uh, then you should do that. And I'll say, what is this based on? And they will give me one citation from the 90s. And I will say, hmm, that is not very current. It seems like the practice is to cite that original source. And again, if you are then questioning uh, that recommendation or you would just like more information on that specific recommendation, then you can contact us and we'll run a literature search. So then we can provide you that more current um, uh, information to that supports that recommendation. Uh, the other thing here, uh, so on the same topic is of neonatal circumcision, um, we have, you know, one author and a couple of editors. And uh, for those who are familiar with um, evidence-based uh, decision-making, uh, we know from our evidence pyramid that, you know, one author is really an expert and, and that can be a valuable um, source for our information but it's not the highest level of evidence um, if it was a whole review team. Um, and so there's some, there's some skepticism sometimes about what, uh, how evidence-based a single author uh, entry truly is. So, um, uh, and, and up to date, they, they're always recognizing that um, on their single author or a couple of author articles, that uh, that can be um, criticized or people can take that cautiously. And so they are always trying to be transparent in their editorial process. Uh, and they update this information quite regularly, particularly when there are changes. So um, what is the bottom line then? Uh, Orby is skeptical when there's a single author and they kind of do some weird stuff with their citations. I, I always like to, you know, think, I think more is better. So if those pediatric guidelines had been updated, I would include maybe the, I, I would just present that information differently. Um, and uh, it's, they, you know, they're updating over 10,000 topics. How extensively are they truly diving into the current evidence um, and analyzing it are always questions that I have. Uh, and and that everyone should have um, when you're making um, evidence informed decisions. But the bottom line is is that uh, up to date really is the preferred clinical decision support tool used by clinicians. And partly it's because it's so easy to use. And like I say, you just pop whatever term you're thinking about into that search box, and it gives you this wonderful step by step guide. Um, it's also the most comprehensive and easiest to use clinical decision support tool. Um, but like with anything, the advice and recommendations need to be considered and appraised as well as with all other guidelines and evidence. So if you, um, uh, we know sometimes uh, physicians, you know, they might have um, covered one topic in medical school and 10 years later, they have a patient and they, you know, they think it's um, gout or they think it might be a certain kind of um, dermatitis. They might use up to date just to sort of brief them on where this sort of current state of evidence is in a topic they're not familiar. Um, it might also help you make just a really quick decision um, so that you're providing that patient with something more than a, a vague recollection or just to give you some additional certainty. Uh, or to give you that launching off place as the first part of your um, exploration into the evidence and the research. So up to date, really, really easy to use. There's more training opportunities that are available. Up to date offers them. Um, we can do additional training as well. Uh, we tend not to get a lot of requests because it is so easy to use, but um, that offer is always uh, there. And then I'm interested if you are now knowing that it's super easy to use, 
and uh, it's got some really great stuff in it. I'm curious to know, will you use up to date? Will you give it a try? Okay, good. So lots of, we've convinced them, Gail. We've convinced them. This is looking, this is looking great. Okay, uh, so that brings us to the end of our presentation, but we're happy to answer and um, any questions that you might have. And like I say, you can just indicate to us if you wanna ask the question, we can unmute you. Um, or you can pop it into the Q and A, um, uh, and we know too that sometimes things, you know, as you're driving home tonight, or maybe sometime um, it might be uh, next month when you are um, looking into or you're thinking about something, or you read a news headline, or you hear about something in the news, and you're like, oh gosh, I want to know more about this. Uh, we really want to make sure that you know how to connect us and know about the kinds of services we offer um, and really that we are here for you. Let's see, okay. And so there's a question in the chat and it says um, that you can't see the form. Um, oh, okay, shoot, they found it. Glad to hear. So we're available um, for the next few moments if you want to um, ask any other questions. And otherwise, um, happy weekend to you. Go Bombers. And uh, we'll see you again.